Peace, everybody. Welcome back. It's Jamal Talib Abdullah Bey. Uh, for this class, we're going to talk about uh, the Constitution, common law, stare decisis, and uh, enforcement of the Constitution. Uh, I'd like to start with the words of Prophet Noble Ali, since he's uh, the one who instructed us to enforce our free national constitution. Well, I want to start off with uh, a divine warning by the Prophet for the nations. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, are all of one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classified as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. It is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to names and the principles that delude to slavery. I, the Prophet, was prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state of mind of their forefathers' divine and national principles that they will be law-abiders and receive their divine right as citizens. According to the free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings, they are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth, and it comes only through the connection of the Moorish divine and national movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by other citizens, that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege as has been the existing condition for many generations. You who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know law in the city hall and among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply, for they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into light. Money does not make the man. It is free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. The wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce, belong to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I am hereby calling all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of government. I'm depending on your support to get them back into the constitutional fold again, that they will learn to love instead of hate, and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. I love my people, and I desire their unity and mine back to their own national and divine standard, because day by day, they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, it is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised there, and ask for his national descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to their constitutional standards of law by name and principles, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name, because they place their trust upon issues and names formed by their forefathers. The word negro, negro deludes, in the Latin language, to the word nigger, the same as the word colored deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers, because honoring thy fathers and thy mothers, your days will be lengthened upon this, this earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizen of this day. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth, and are recognized by, by said government in which they live. The 14th and 15th Amendments, brought the North and South in unit, placing the Southerners, who were at the time without power, with the constitutional body of power. And at the time, 1865, the free national constitutional law was enforced since 1774, declared all men equal and free, 
And if all men are declared by their, excuse me, by the free national constitution to be free and equal, since the constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th amendments for the salvation of my people. Excuse me, for the salvation of our people and citizens. So, there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost. And that is through the above statements. Then the lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills, and neither will be harmed, because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will reign in this land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come. Because the great God of Allah is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people, and this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, disease, etc. And I, the prophet, do hereby believe that this administration of government being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution and laws and through the help of such class of citizens, I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of men that have never gone, excuse me, that have never done them any good but have always harmed them. So I, the prophet, am hereby calling aloud with a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been com uh, committed and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America because they know it is not the true and divine way and without understanding they have fallen from the true light into utter darkness of sin and there is no nation on this earth today that will recognize them social socially, religiously, politically, or economically, etc. In their present condition of their endeavorment in which they themselves try to force, force upon a civilized world they will never refrain from their sinful ways of action, and their deeds have brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. And they fought the Southerner for all these, gen uh, all these great misuse, excuse me, misuses. But I have traveled in the South and examined conditions there, and it is the works of my people continuously practicing those things which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to any nation that lives the life. And I am hereby calling on all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness into marvelous light from the prophet. So that's what he said. And notice he was talking about enforcing the Constitution and having your own free national name. And he said those who fail to recognize their free national name in their constitutional government are classified as undesirables and subject to all inferior names and abuses. That's our people. Where do you know so-called blacks are mass incarcerated and imprisoned and beat up and killed in the streets? Because uh, black people don't have any principles. They don't, they don't have a name. They don't have their own religion. That's why they're three-fifths because they're missing two, their name and religion, and they're abused. Uh, there's also... There's many great points that, as I was reading it, I, you know, I wanted to expound on them, but I just, I want to, um, you know, we can go on that into a different class, but since we're talking about the Constitution, uh, let's continue. Uh, this is something I wrote about it. It is in the interest of all free national beings to enforce their free national Constitution, as the Constitution is what protects them from encroachment and molestation of their unalienable birthrights. It is a disgrace for any one of us to live in ignorance, and I put in uh, quotations, which is sin. The enforcement of our American Constitution is in the interest of all those who stand for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, salvation. It is stipulated in the Declaration of Independence that all free national beings are endowed with unalienable rights, and to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. The Constitution is a contract between, between the American citizens, we the people, and those whom they elect to represent and protect them. If you do not enforce it, then how are you protected? If there is corruption in the government, it is because the people allow it, i.e. no one is enforcing the Constitution. So when it says, uh, you know, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, if the people don't uh, enforce the Constitution, then we're consenting to the abuses and mistreatments. So now I want to go into what, uh, the definition of a Constitution. This is Black's Law Dictionary. A Constitution is the organic and fundamental law of a nation or state, which may be written or unwritten, establishing the character and conception of its government, laying the basic principles to which its internal life is to be uh, conformed, 
organized, excuse me, organizing the government and regulating, distribute, uh, distributing, and limiting the functions of its different departments and prescribing the extent and manner of the exercise of sovereign powers. A charter of government deriving its whole authority from the governed. So again, deriving its whole authority from the governed. So let's go about what is the common law. As distinguished from law created by the enactment of legislators, uh, legislators, the common law comprises the body of those principles and rules of action relating to the government and security of persons and property, which uh, derive their authority solely from using uh, usages and customs of immemorial antiquity, or from the judgment and decrees of the courts recognizing, affirming, and enforcing such usage, usages and customs. So the common law is formed by judicial uh, decrees, or what you call stare decisis or res judicata. So the Constitution is uh, what you would call stare decisis, right? So the Constitution So the Constitution is there, uh, stare decisive. Stare means to look, to look fixedly at, right? And decisive is something that already decided. So when it says we the people, right, of the Constitution, that's something that the people decided, right? Let me just pull it out real quick. Bill of Rights. So it says, We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. So the Constitution for the United States of America, because it's binding and against those who we elect uh, to uh, protect and represent us. See what I'm saying? So this is something we the people decided, right? So that's their decisis. Also, what helps form the common law, I'm sorry, this is black. So stair decisis also helps form the common law too. Right? Uh, so let's just read common law again. Common law as distinguished from the laws created by uh, enactment of legislator, the common law principles comprise the body of those principles and rules of action relating to government and security of persons and liberty, which derive their authority solely from usage and customs of immemorial antiquity uh, and from the judgments and decrees of the courts recognizing, uh, affirming, and encouraging the usage and customs. So as an example, right, stare decisis, let's go into the Second Amendment. A well-regulated well militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Right? So that's the Constitution. Right? So the Bill of Rights. Second Amendment. The Constitution is an example of what stare decisis is. So the people decided on the Constitution, so the Bill of Rights would be an example of stare decisis. Now here's an example of the common law, or res judicata, which came out of a, um, a court case, right? Let me see. 
There we go. All right. So here's res judicata. All right. Which is free and open to all is not the subject Oops. of a license or tax. And that is from Chicago versus Collins. Five one N E nine oh seven. So here's an example of enforcing the Constitution, right? You know our people get arrested for weapons, uh, possession of a weapon, right? Without a license to carry or a license to conceal, blah, 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 all this crap, right? And we already talked about prison industrial complex, how their main job of the prison is to imprison our people for free labor, right? So here, here would be an example of enforcing the Constitution if you were to face those alleged charges, right? So it was already, stare decisive, it was already decided that the people have the right to bear arms, right? So the right of the people to keep and bear arms, right? That's stare decisive. Now, res judicata, a right which is free and open to all is not the subject of a license. So how can you get charged with a, how can you get charged with not having a license to carry when it's your right to keep and bear arms. You see what I'm saying? But now, this, then you would have to go into this, right? According to Black's Law Dictionary, Negro is black. And this is exactly what Noble Dwarley said, right? Also look into the uh, dictionary, a Negro is a colored person. Now we already know colored in law means fake, right? And what did Noble Drew Lee, Drew Lee say about that? Anything painted, stained, varnished, or dyed? That's, that's what he said, right? Let me see. The word Negro deludes in, Latin, in the Latin language to the word nigger. The same as the word colored deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, or dyed. So in the law book, when it says colored is anything, uh, you know, it's a semblance or sim simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real, that means it's fake, right? So when you say you're a colored person, you're saying you're a fake person. Now, we already, we already established that in the law book. It says uh, there has been no legal technical su signification to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know, right? So when you say you're Negro, black, colored, or Indian, same thing, right? Indian, West Indian, Spanish, Hispanic, Latino, Latin, all of that is colored, right? So when you say you're when you say you that you're that you make an oral contract, and you're since the word colored means you know anything paint stained varnished or dyed, and it means uh you know there's no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person which the courts are bound judicially to know you are agreeing orally to be in this status right here. Civiliter mortus, do you see that on the camera? Which means dead in the eyes of the law. So when you say you're a Negro, Black, Colored, Spanish, Indian, West Indian, Latin American, Afro, Rican, Puerto Rican, Hispanic, whatever, you're saying you don't have to recognize me in law. And you're saying that and you're agreeing to it. So none of this applies to you. Remember, Noble Dwarley said he's trying to get his people back 
and there's a constitutional fault of government. And he keeps saying, he says, you know, we keep using those words which delude to slavery. You see what I'm saying? And in order to be recognized from any government, you must declare your free national name. And remember, your nationality is what establishes your political status and who you have allegiance to. And your political status is your ability to call and to force your rights. And status is one standard state of condition as it relates to the rest of the community. You see what I'm saying? And then Noble Dralee says this, right? He also says, oh, let me see. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles because to be citizen of every gov any government, you must claim your national descent name because they're, they place their trust upon issues and names formed by their forefathers. Now, that's Article 6 of the Constitution, right? Now, remember, here in America, Morocco, before the Constitution was established, the treaties, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and the Moroccan Empire was the supreme law of the land, right? So now let's go back into Article 6, right? All debts contracted and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made, or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be, shall be the supreme law of the land. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. So again, the Constitution, enforcing the Constitution is enforcing the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the Moroccan Empire and the United States. And uh, I can't remember which, which treaty, but Article 9 of one treaty and Article 11 of, of another one never granted any uh, subject matter, excuse me, never, never granted any personum jurisdiction of the United States to any more. You know what I'm saying? So that's Article 3 of the Constitution. But let's try to get back to this, right? So if they try to charge you for possession of a weapon with no license, blah, 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 they have an oath to the Constitution, which means they have an oath to this, which means they can't charge you for that. You see what I'm saying? But again, in the Bible, it says, My people perish for the day for the lack of knowledge. And Noble Drew Ali said he's trying to bring his people back to the marvelous light. That light is knowledge. So enforce the Constitution. You see what I'm saying? Now let's go into... Um, you want to get close up before I erase this? Because we're going to go into the 14th and 15th Amendment and why Noble Drew Ali said that uh, there's no need for the 14th and 15th Amendment for the salvation of his people. Good? All right, so remember, Negro, colored, black. I'll just rewrite that. Now, if you look up, um, let me see, I'll just go to my book. If you read the definition or the, the 14th Amendment, it is different from uh, all the other amendments because it wasn't, it's not real law, right? So you got to keep in mind, Congress adjourned C and a D eighteen sixty one. So since eighteen sixty one, they stopped being legitimate Congress, right? So they stopped being the jour. And now they're de facto, right? So they overthrew the republic in 1861. And they're not the same thing. All right, so 1868, after they murdered Abraham Lincoln, they created the 14th Amendment. All right, now if you read the 14th Amendment, let me just find it in his book real quick. It talks about persons and privileges instead of people and rights. Now that might not sound like a big difference, but it absolutely is. Because for those who know law, 
we know that there are two types of persons in law. One's natural and one's artificial. Artificial persons, such as corporations, don't have any rights. Therefore, they can be molested and their liberties encroached upon because corporations only have rights that the people give to them. Now, a corporation is considered a colored person. Therefore, Walmart doesn't have the right to keep and bear arms. You see what I'm saying? So since you, if you verbally agree to be a corporation, then you're verbally agreeing to be regulated by commerce. Let's see if I can find it. Real quick. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find it. I'll just write it down. So the 14th Amendment talks about persons and privileges. I probably spelled it wrong, but whatever. Right? And if we, we just read the Second Amendment, right, and it said the right of the people. So this is talking about people and rights. Right? So you got to remember, um, Secret Treaty of Verona that we went in, in the other video, Remember we talked about how uh, they were talking about overthrowing all Republican forms of government in places which they exist and preventing them from uh, existing in places which they don't? Mm -hmm. So the Moors and the Europeans who decided to end the wars between us and them, we established a republic here based on the Iroquois Law of the Great Peace, the stuff we already had in operation here, right? So to overthrow that, which was just uh, a continuation of the Spanish Inquisition or just the Inquisition against the Moors, they did this. You see what I'm saying? So in, in law, there are two types of persons. So which one were they talking about? If you don't know, then you don't know. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? This is also why they say so-called blacks were never meant to be uh, never meant to be U.S. citizens, because it has nothing to do with us. The only thing that has to do with us is their contract agreement between them, the United States, the United States, the colonies, and the Moroccan Empire, us, to your piece of friendship, you see what I'm saying? So we can't be citizens of that. Mm -hmm. We have our own free national government. Yeah. Noble Drali was trying to remind us of that, right? So, so when they did this, they're talking about this, this right here. As opposed to human beings with free national names and, and principles, you see what I'm saying? So that's that's the that's the one type of person. Or this would be the second person, because the, the the human being comes first. And this would be the real person. Alright, or the human being. So remember, Second Amendment says the rights of the people. Fourteenth Amendment says the privilege of the person to be a citizen. You see what I'm saying? And we already established that the United States isn't a country, it's a corporation. So by you saying you're a 14th Amendment member whatever, you're saying you're a citizen of Walmart or CVS or the United States, which are all private corporation companies. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So this is why Noble Dreyley said there's no need for the 14th, 15th Amendment for the salvation of our people. And it's so funny because most people think that, oh, they're trying to call us like we're, like we're animals, like we're not a real person. It, well, because you're not. Yeah. If you agree to be that, mm -hmm. as an example, I was. Uh, but they take it as a spite. Well, because it is. Not realizing that <laughs> you can, you're a national. Yeah, but it, because this, because this is like, mm -hmm. this is pejorative. It, it is to be taken as an insult because this is saying you're Christian property. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it absolutely that's what it means. Remember, Christian black codes, blacks can't own property. This is why you know the mortgages, right? All of that stuff, licenses. Mortgages fall under this, Indian titles. All right, Indian titles fall, fall under this. Driver's licenses, uh, marriage certificates, birth certificates, right? Remember, the birth is really an E, right? So let's go, let's go into history a little bit, right?
All right, so we're going to talk about the birth certificate because this all has you know everything to do with the democracy. So remember, 1492, Treaty of Granada, after Isabella and uh, Ferdinand merged their kingdoms a few years prior to institute the Inquisition against the Moors again. Right, we were kicked out of Granada, 1492. Columbus went on his reconnaissance mission here, blah, 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 blah. Now, what the, what the popes were doing with uh, the Knights Templar and stuff like that, whatever the Knights Templars would uh, conquer of the Moorish estates, they would convert it over to European administration. So that's where the Cestic UV comes in, in uh, 1580. I think it's IE. Cestic UV. That's the Cestic UV Trust. So the birth certificate is what's placed on our physical bodies as a bond. That's the bondage. So when they, uh, so when we're when we're born, since they're considering us an artificial person, they're not documenting a per a human being that has just been begotten. They're documenting they're documenting a corporation that has just been born. Remember, in law, to be born means to be brought whole into existence. Mm -hmm. So they're just certifying that this corporation was was uh, created, and then they're attaching the debt to it with the social security number, the, it, it's really just a tax number. So they're, they're saying, this is how much money that this human being will generate within, or this corporation will generate within its lifespan. Mm -hmm. That's how they, that's how they convert our stuff. You see what I'm saying? And since, since you're their part, their property via the birth certificate, remember article 22 of Christian black codes, um, you know, blacks can't own anything. And anything that they do own, it goes to the slave master. So that's why there's an account number on the back of your birth certificate. Yeah, because you're you're considered. And that red number on the back of your social security card. If you yeah, but that up. it's not yours. First well, of all, it's theirs. not yours. Yeah, it's theirs. It's the European Inquisitionist commercial instrument that they put on our physical bodies mm -hmm. to control our land. You see what I'm saying? And that's what it is. But that's exactly why it's it's an all right because it's an account number. Mm -hmm. That's why they try to say, oh, authenticate the birth certificate. You get access to this. Mm -hmm. When the real issue is, when they did this, right, 1933, they got rid of the gold, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the Federal, uh, Federal Reserve Act, that's what it's called. All right, hold on. Right. So, from here, well, prior to this, but 1861 when they uh, adjourned C&D, their whole mission was to just take the republic and flip it on its on its back for their for their political gain. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So by them creating this, and they say, oh yeah, if you authenticate this, which means you're authorizing our peonage on you, you're <laughs> you're agreeing to it, then you get access to a bunch of money when they got rid of the money in 1933. So it's just a bunch of paper that they can just print. So even if you succeed with this process, you're still considered their slave. Mm -hmm. This is why Noble Dralee said, a beggar people can never reach the highest in them. Since they're printing their own paper, you're, you're never going to reach anything higher than them because they're still your source. Yeah. You're still going to them for something. Mm -hmm. That's that. And remember, uh, the uh, Rex 84, they're going to use people's greed you see what I'm saying? They, that's why Noble Drelli said, I wish I desired my people to know about their higher self and their lower self. That lower self is looking for this. Mm -hmm. When they're, they're having you distracted with this, but they're worried about our land. Because mm -hmm. the land's the real wealth. There's gold in the land. You, know, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Once yeah. we start taking, uh, administering our own free national government, we get our land back, we get our gold back. Mm -hmm. But we keep worried about this piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, right, the Federal Reserve System isn't constitutional. Neither is the IRS. Remember we read the document saying the United States yeah. denies the fact that the IRS is a part of the government, right? And then uh, we'll go into this real quick too, since we're talking about the Federal Reserve. This is the American Constitutional Interpretation 2nd Edition, right? This is on page 11. Page 11. Let's find it, right. Nowhere in the document, they're talking about the Constitution, Interpreting a constitution, right? Nowhere in the document, for instance, is there specific authorization for Congress to fund anything, excuse me, to found anything like the Federal Reserve System or even a bank 
to enable it to discharge its fiscal responsibilities, create a national police force like the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Remember the word inquisition means to investigate. Create a national police force like the Federal Bureau of Investigation or establish an agency like the Federal Communications Commission to regulate use of airwaves or mass media. So the reason why this is saying this is because our government was overthrown in 1861. Remember, they stopped doing business, uh, they stopped doing business as an unincorporated body politic for the republic and they started operating as their private board of directors doing business as the US Congress. So everything that they do is private, meaning it doesn't apply to you. Now here, here's more common law to support that, right? Since we're talking about the Constitution. Because again, remember, keep this in context with people getting arrested for weapons and all that kind of crap to mass imprison our people. So they say, well, in this, as an example, we're in so-called Rhode Island, which is really the aboriginal Narragansett territory. Rhode Island was incorporated in uh, 1863, so they're acting like they're the land. Prior to that, the land was already here, so they clearly don't have territorial jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. So here's the way to combat that. Oh, in state of Rhode Island, you have to have a license to have a blah, 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 when it's your right, right? Every man is independent of all laws except those prescribed by nature. He is not bound by any institutions formed by his fellow men without his consent. That's Cruden versus Nail, right? And that's from 1796. So the private law of Rhode Island, which we know they're inquisitionists, we know that they're a private corporation company, incorporated in 1863, so they're private. Their private law doesn't apply to any one of us unless we agree to be this. Mm -hmm. Unless we agree to be a citizen of Rhode Island or a Rhode Islander mm -hmm. or a New Yorker. You see, you see how it works? Yeah. So this would have to go back again. After 1492, the Antica Divina, which was their plan to come here to Morocco, forced Christianity on us and establish jurisdiction over our land. Because once they get the land, they get the people. So remember, Roger Williams, he founded Providence, 1636. Uh, then, so that's the renaming of the land. So that's establishing persona jurisdiction over the people as well. Then, 1638, they set up the Baptist Church. So again, Antiquitera Divina. So when you nationalize, right? When you nationalize, You're combating their Inticatera Divina. Right? Let me just write that down. Inter Catera Divina. The battery is about to die. On your camera? Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember, the Inticatera Divina, since we're in the Narragansett territory, we gotta think about Roger Williams, right? Roger Williams, set up Providence, 1636. Uh, that establishes territorial jurisdiction, so terra personum, that's the person, and subject matter. Subject matter jurisdiction, that's classification, classification of law. So this is how it works in a, in a, in a, a, a legal way. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So as an example, knowing that, knowing that this land isn't Rhode Island, knowing that we're not Rhode Islanders, knowing that they're not government, so they have no subject matter jurisdiction, that's Article 3 of the Constitution, that's diversity of citizenship. We're citizens of a different nation. You see what I'm saying? Knowing that we're able to get felony charges dismissed from superior court. When if you look in this book and it talks about constitutional courts, it never mentions superior court, not once. You see what I'm saying? They, they exist in reality, but they're not recognized by law. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They're dealing with commerce only. So if you want to zoom that up to the camera. So since we're talking about enforcing the constitution, they try to charge this person with um, obtaining money under false pretenses. When well, we already know Federal Reserve Act of 1933, they took all the money out of circulation, meaning there is no gold. You see what I'm saying? And this, they embossed it, certified seal of the Superior Court of the corporate state of Rhode Island, right? So when you enforce that, there, we, so what we did was in the affidavit, uh, we, here's, what it, here's the affidavit that we sent in. 
It says, in attempts to ensure I'm dealing with a legally and lawfully competent court of, with prescribed jurisdiction per Article 3 of the Constitution for the United States of America, remember 1861, and then Act of Congress 1871, they started operating on the Constitution of the United States of America, not for. So the Constitution for is the one that we put on them, you see what I'm saying? Uh, I am rightfully demanded to see the judge's oath or affirmation to support and defend the Constitution with regards to this matter. So again, all judges are bound to the Constitution. Their obligation is to support and defend the Constitution. A judge's sole job is to make sure that our rights don't get violated. So anytime a judge sees anything like this or weapons charges, they know that we don't know, so they proceed accordingly. Since we won't enforce our rights, they're not going to do it for us. You see what I'm saying? Which is a conflict of interest, but we already know they're not judges. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like they're acting like they're this. They're really this. We don't know it. So we, so we make the oral contract and we call them a judge. We call them government. That's oral contract. When they're not. And they know they're not. But even when you're right, they're still going to challenge you. You see what I'm saying? But if you stand on your square, stand on your knowledge, you get it dismissed. You see what I'm saying? Because, I don't know, a lot of people talk about this information, but they haven't been to court, right? They think, they think oh, they use words to trick you. Well, not really. If you know what they're using, then they can't trick you. It's just... When you go to, the, to these places, these tribunals, you know, they got the magistrate, so-called judge right here. They got the so-called defendant, the so-called plaintiff, and then they have the way in. And then they have a bunch of people sitting right here. A bunch of people who they're also trying to rob. Because this is to rob people, mm -hmm. right? So they have a bunch of people in here who are also waiting to go in and get robbed by this guy right here who's doing human trafficking. You see what I'm saying? And then they got the, um, the, uh, the prosecutor right here, who's also an officer of the court, and then they got an attorney right here defending you who's dead so you can't speak, so he speaks for you, who's also an officer of the court. The word attorney comes from a turn, which means to turn over, so he's turning you over to the court because they're all robbing you. <laughs> this is why when, when you get hit with weapons charges, he's trying to cut a deal because they're all getting paid, and they're robbing you. <laughs> you see, that, that's why when our people say, there's no justice. Well, there's justice for them. Because mm -hmm. you don't know you're dealing with contracts. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with a de facto entity that overthrew your people, keeping you dumb, so that they can control your shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now again, no jelly was talking about bringing our people back into marvelous light. That's enforced the, the Constitution. Again, if our people aren't mentally competent, we're considered wards of the state which means the state owns us. They have to do things for us. Mm -hmm. Again, Christian property can't own property. An infant or minor can't own property because they can't manage their own affairs because their status is dead. Simple to more twos. So again, they, they, they got us according to airship trust law. So we, we, can't, we can't inherit our land because we're not mentally capable to. Mm -hmm. And then since we're not able to inherit, we're also not able to manage our own affairs, so they make us wards of the state. Mm -hmm. So they, they convert all our energies into their administration, and then if you look up ward of the court or ward of the state, they don't have to account for anything that they make on our backs. You see what I'm saying? Mm. You see how that works? You see how we're subject to misbuses and yeah. uh, abuses, abuses or whatever? You see what I'm saying? And the salvation is enforcing the Constitution. So again, Second Amendment, right? You have the right to bear arms. Res judicata, which means a thing, uh, a thing already adjudicated on, says a right which is free and open to all, is not subject to a subject uh, uh, to a license or tax. So free national beings can call into force their Second Amendment rights. Negroes, black, colors, Indian, Spanish, Hispanic, Latino, Latin American, Afro American, Afro Rican, African American, they don't have rights. By consent and all agreement, they don't have rights. Not because some European with pale skin, who they keep calling white, says you don't have rights. It's because they agree to it. Like, you can call me a bitch all day, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter until I start calling myself a bitch. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Then I become that, by oral agreement. Mm -hmm. So again, people try to say, oh, when, when, did, uh, when did Europeans start calling us black, or whatever. The issue is not that they called us black. The issue is that ourselves? we took it on and we call ourselves black. Yeah. That's the issue. We made a verbal contract. It, we made an oral contract with Allah, that we're not going to honor our mothers and fathers, and we're going to be someone else's property. Mm. All agreement. That's why nothing, nothing bad happens to these Europeans. Because we're agreeing to everything. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So in a, in a nutshell, that would be enforcing your constitutional rights. You see? 
And then it clearly it works, or I wouldn't have this stamped and certified from Superior Court, right? So I want to talk about that, that concealed carry thing that those Europeans were talking about in those videos or whatever. The EDC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we're going to have enough battery. That's fine. But yeah, um, and this applies to everything. Like when you were picking me up and uh, you seen the car on the side of the road and it had a ticket on it, yeah. right? And here's because they were just parked, right? So the right to park or travel is part of the liberty which the natural person, citizen, cannot be tried with, uh, deprived without due process of law under the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. That's Kent versus Doolis. So the right to park. So since you can't be subject to a license or a tax, a tax is a fee, you can't be charged for parking on the street, so you can't get a ticket. Now remember, they're dealing with commerce. So since you consent, you go to the DMV, you get a contract with them, you're saying, I'm agreeing to be regulated by commercial regulation, by the corporate state, who we'll overdo our government so they don't have a real legitimate say in commerce anyway, mm -hmm. unless you contract with them. Mm -hmm. See, So it's a trick, but it's not, they're not necessarily tricking us, they're just keeping us dumb in the school, and then they got the, their Knights Templars out there, who's the police, to cause fear in our minds, so, oh, we need a ticket, we need a driver's license, oh, we need registration, oh, we need this, oh, we need that, well, what if you get pulled over, well, what if this happens, well, first of all, if you want insurance, stop paying, uh, uh, you know, do whatever you want, but I wouldn't recommend paying some company who doesn't have allegiance to you, why don't you put that money aside, Stack it up, and then if anything happens, you just go to yourself and then pay off whatever you need to pay off. Yeah, wouldn't it be wonderful if your family all did the same, and if anybody's car... Then you create your own little insurance company within yeah, your family? Yeah, yeah. But you want to go to some foreigner who you... So are people complain about racism, but they go to these white people, and they get these contracts with them. Yeah, and you give your money away every so, month. So you're complaining you about it, argue. but you're funding it. Yeah. Right? And then you got to argue about whether or not they're going to fix your car. Yeah. After all the money you gave and then you And then you still have to pay them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That, does that make sense? No. It doesn't make sense. No. So, again, our people perish by the day for the lack of knowledge. So the point is to put the information out there. Mm -hmm. And then you fight for your own right. You study, and then you, you choose to fight or not, but whatever. The point is, nothing's going to change <laughs> until we enforce this constitution. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, when I went to the law library, the librarian was... Like, I, I kept asking for, like, certain books that I knew the name of. And uh, she was like, and then she asked me, she said, are you a student? I was like, nah, I just study this stuff. And she looked at me all weird. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're not used to our people just going in there, speaking with an intelligent tone like Noble Drawley told us, and just getting, getting information. Mm -hmm. And like I said, when, when I went in there, they look at me funny all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe because my hair, but I don't know. Probably because I'm the only more in the, in the, li in the law library. And it's either empty or full of like old European men mm -hmm. or like younger European men trying to be bar yeah. bar attorneys. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? To help rob our people. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just it's just interesting. Didn't the Pope of Rome tell the whole bar association? Yeah, that they're done. <laughs> to stop. Yeah, but we're but we're finished. dealing with people who've been living off of us, right? This right here. They live off of this. That's the Inquisition. Mm -hmm. They've been they've been doing it and they're still doing it, right? They've been living off us being in a subservient position. So why would they want to give that up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like, like the mob boss is like, he's been running this little area for so long. Why would he want to give it up if he's mm -hmm. been able to send his children's children, children, children to college and go on vacation every week and just live comfortably? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And control international commerce, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And all I got to do is just maintain the natives, which is us. Because we keep thinking we're Negro, black, and colored. And then they live off of us. Why would they want to give that up? Mm. I mean, logically, they, they, they're they not going to. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And, and they already know, like, Negro, black, colored, they don't do shit. All they do is march and pray. They don't go to court and stand on their rights because they're, they're European is their God. Mm. They know that. That's why they do, they do shit like this. And because they know these people ain't gonna do shit. They talk a lot of shit. They talk about how they're hard and they're gangbangers and you know they'll kill their brother. I know someone who's shot his brother for stepping on his shoes. Right? Because that's what black people do. That's crazy. And he called himself Spanish, but still civilly dead, right? Mm -hmm. They know that these people ain't gonna do shit. I'm not saying kill nobody. All I'm saying is enforce your constitutional rights. Mm 
-hmm. You have the right to to um, combat a false arrest. Mm -hmm. You have the right to stand up in front of the so-called magistrate and stand on your rights and hold him to the Constitution, which he took an oath to. Mm -hmm. And he's undermining because you don't know what his obligation is. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Isn't that, it's simple, right? It's simple, but it's, it's just intricately weaved. But once you start following the web, you're like, oh, I see all of this is just one web. Mm -hmm. The police, nice Templar. The so-called judges, they're the magistrates. The so-called um, governor, they're like the bishops. So they, they control, it's, a, it's really a pyramid scheme, it really is, right? So you got the, you got the governor over here, right? Then you got the so-called judges, all parentheses, because they're, they're uh, substitutes. So they're the substitute L's, right? Um, Hold on, no, that's false. Then a substitute base. The legislative uh, branch are the substitute 